The version 4 is what we're going to be soldering today, and it's got a few complicated chips on it. The FT2232 is a 64 pin TQFP chip. Got a strip of them here. This isn't so hard to solder, the pitch is okay. The CPLD we're using is a Cool Runner 2 with 100 pins, also a TQFP package. This is going to be a little harder to solder, not because the pins are small, but because it's really hard to get the pins lined up in the first place and make sure they all stay aligned while you solder it. For soldering, I've got my IOA soldering station. We'll just be using the, the soldering iron set to about uh, 350 or so. I don't think it's really accurate, but that's where the dial lands on our soldering station. I'll also be using my Adafruit magnifier so that I can see the parts, and I've got my trusty flux. So, let's yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is apply some flux. Uh, just a lot of flux to every pad on the board. This will help the solder flow smoothly and uh, just make everything generally easier. I'm going to start with the FT2232 chip because in my opinion it's more difficult to solder than the 100 pin chip. First line up, pin one. And then just a little dab of solder. Today I'm going to try something a little bit different. I've got this 0.3 millimeter solder I picked up in Akihabara, and I'm just going to spool it out and try to solder each pen individually. Usually I do a drag solder, and I'm sure it'll turn into that by the end. But we're going to try to put on as little solder as possible on each pen so we don't have to wick as much up when we're done. And hopefully this, this fine gauge solder is going to help us do that. I, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I still ended up drag soldering. I sort of gobbed the solder on. The pins are too close together and too wide, and the footprint isn't quite optimized for hand soldering. So I had a, a bit of a difficulty soldering each pin individually. Maybe we'll get it on the CPLD. But uh, I did get a lot less solder on there, which means there's a lot less to suck up to wick up later. And uh, so we'll, we'll call it precision drag soldering. I still think it's an improvement and it's going to be cleaner than it normally would. Now I'm going to solder this 100 pin chip. This is the CPLD, or the programmable logic we use for the buffer chip. And uh, this is uh, quite large, lots of pins on it, but the spacing is good, and the pitch is nice, so it won't actually be that difficult to get it soldered down. I think it'll go quickly and a bit more smoothly than the FT2232 even. But again, we have lots of flux on here. The first thing we'll do is solder one pin, and then line it up, and get that pin heated and melted and then we'll come back and try to solder some pins around the edge. Now I'm done soldering both chips on, so I'm going to take some solder wick and suck off the excess solder. Since we use the fine pitch solder, there's like way less extra than there usually would be, but we still got to do the cleanup. I inspected the board closely and it looks okay. One thing I did notice was we actually used a non-e-tested one. The e-test ones are tested to make sure the whole board works and they put a little mark on the side. Since I've been using this one in the videos, I've uh, used a non-e-tested one so I didn't damage it, but that was the first one I picked up. Um, I'm a little nervous because I hate developing with boards that aren't tested. There could be a little flaw anywhere and it could compound all the other problems I have in the design. So I think I'm going to go back and solder a second one and then I will join you again after these two chips are stuck on it. Okay, I'm back. I soldered a second Bus Blaster version 4. Uh, this one's on a PCB with e-testing. You can see the maybe the red line. We've got two now, but this will actually be helpful because when we put it into production, we have to send a prototype off to seed uh, so they have one to base their, their prototype on. And we'll use the untested board for that uh, after we prototype with the good board.
Now all the essential parts are stuck on the board. You saw in the beginning I went and put a dot on one side of every pad and then stuck all the parts into them. And now that we've got all the parts on there, I'm going to go back and solder the other side of every part really quickly. And then I'll go through with some soldering wick like this and I'll wick up any extra solder. So we're getting really close to being done with the board now. This last part just takes a few minutes. That's everything we need on the board to do an initial test. Now we can take it over and plug in the USB into the computer, and if we're lucky, the FT2232 will show up right away. That's not the end of the project. We still have to write the bitstream to go in the field programmable gatorade, but that's not such a big deal. We already have that ready. It's just a matter of recompiling it for the new chip. So we'll go do that testing now, and we'll let you know how it turns out. We'll be back Thursday with another video, maybe the power-up test video, uh, maybe something different entirely. Thank you so much for watching.